Now, about a month ago, the Bolivia Ministry of Health received reports of three cases of hemorrhagic fever of an unknown etiology with some suspicion of human to human transmission. Now, earlier this week, uh, the numbers they have come up with there are five cases, including three fatalities. Um, three have been laboratory confirmed, including one of the fatal cases. Now, the, these patients had symptom onset between the end of April and the end of May. Four of the five are male, um, a very wide range of age between 21 and 65. Three are healthcare workers and the other two are people that worked in agriculture. Now, the Pan American Health Organization suggests that the probable site of exposure for the healthcare workers was the hospital setting. In this case, they had direct contact with blood, respiratory and gastrointestinal secretions during invasive procedures that were performed on one of the cases. Now, as far as the agricultural workers, uh, it was probably uh, contracted during rice harvest in this community within La Paz department in Bolivia. Now laboratory confirmation has been carried out by Bolivia's uh, laboratory, uh, the Center for Tropical Diseases, and in collaboration with the CDC. Uh, and they've reported the identification of an arena virus. And it's been partially sequenced and shows a pretty close identity with Chapari virus. Now, according to the CDC, the transmission of Chapari virus or Chapari hemorrhagic fever is like all arena viruses. It's via a rodent host, which is the reservoir of the virus. Now, humans can contract uh, Chapari hem hemorrhagic fever through contact with an infected rodent. It can be a direct or it can also be through like inhalation of aerosolized Chapari virus from urine or feces of the infected rodents. Now, it, CDC says that although arena viruses have been isolated from insects, neither they nor any other intermediary host appear to spread the virus. And of course, this was long before uh, the current Bolivia cases. But the CDC says person-to-person -person transmission of arena viruses through aerosolization, although possible, is rare. And of the only one observed cluster of cases of Chapari hemorrhagic fever, there was no evidence of person-to-person -person transmission. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Chapari virus. Um, it was newly discovered. Uh, within the past 20 years. And here's a study from PLOS Pathogens from 2008. And it says a small focus of hemorrhagic fever cases occurred near Cochabamba, Bolivia in December 2003 and January 2004. Specimens were available from only one fatal case, which had a clinical course that included fever, headache, um, joint aches, um, muscle aches, body aches, and vomiting with subsequent deterioration and multiple hemorrhagic signs. So they did some testing and it uh, turned out negative for a bunch of the arena viruses found in South America. And it also turned out negative for stuff like dengue and yellow fever. Um, so the authors of this study say there's four rodent-borne arena viruses known to cause hemorrhagic fever in the New World. And these include Junin, Machupo, Guanarito, and Sabia viruses, uh, which are found in rural areas of Argentina, Bolivia, Venezuela, and Brazil, respectively. Um, so they had, uh, in late December... In December 2003 and early 2004, a small number of cases of these hemorrhagic fever cases in rural Bolivia in an area outside of the known area where Machupo virus, the Bolivian hemorrhagic fever, was endemic. Uh, 
Uh, the patient in that case uh, had symptoms similar to those seen with other uh, renoviral hemorrhagic fever. You know, fever, headache, joint muscle pain, vomiting, rapid progression to shock, bleeding, and death at 14 days post onset of illness. Um, so they did a lot of testing and um, basically came out with a new virus um, called Chapari virus. Now, the the arenovirus family is composed of largely rodent-borne viruses, which are divided into the old world and the new world complexes. And of course, the old world, the most common one by far, is Lassa fever virus. Um, the most important, most common, and it does cause a lot of severe disease. Um, then, of course, we have the new world ones, which are all found in South American countries. Uh, onset of symptoms follows incubation of about one to two weeks. Then we, we've see, heard, talked about the different symptoms already. And it can, after the initial uh, nonspecific symptoms, it goes on to more specific hemorrhagic neurological symptoms, petechiae, bleeding gums, tremors, lethargy. Um, about a third of untreated cases go on to develop more severe neurologic and or hemorrhagic symptoms with diffuse um, echomoses and bleeding from mucous membranes and puncture sites. And of course, delirium, coma, and convulsions. So it's a very, very serious disease. So here's a map of Bolivia and some of the surrounding countries. And you can see the distance between uh, where Machupo hemorrhagic fever is found as compared to where Chapari, it's quite a distance away. So, so yeah, this is what we're seeing right now in Bolivia, and they're you know investigating and, and working on that ca these cases right now as we speak. But these diseases also um, prompted the CDC this week uh, to issue a travel advisory for people that want to travel to um, Bolivia, and it says. Health officials in Bolivia have reported an outbreak of hemorrhagic fever associated with arenovirus similar to Chapare arenovirus. The first case was in a man from Caranavi province, a healthcare provider, uh, also became ill, and it goes on and on, things we've already discussed. Um, so basically they're telling you, if you go to Brazil, or excuse me, Bolivia, um, what can you do to protect yourself? It's not clear at this point if there was an animal source. It, there likely was, um, since that's the way arena viruses work. Um, but, but they say travelers should avoid all contact with rodents and rodent urine, rodent feces. Avoid contact with people who are sick. And travelers that go to Bolivia to provide health care to local populations may be at, at risk also. And they should wear full PPE when treating suspected hemorrhagic fever cases. So this is kind of an unusual thing going going on in Bolivia right now. We're going to be keeping a close eye on that. And uh, I'll see you next time on for another infectious disease news brief. Thanks a lot.